I'm gonna show you how to travel with just one bag. And believe it or not, with this setup, I could travel for months. Make sure you stick around to the end as I share one specific technique and practice that turned me from an overpacker into a one bag traveler. And let's be honest, we all wanna be the calm, cool, and collected one bag traveler. So here is how I pack for my travels with just one bag. You're gonna wanna start by picking the right bag. For me, when I travel, there are really four criteria that I think about when picking the appropriate bag for my travels. Size, comfort, durability, and organization. Size. Remember, the goal is not just to find the biggest backpack so you can fit more stuff in it. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of what we're trying to do. The goal is to find a backpack that's gonna help you travel most efficiently. Most airlines have a little bit different standard of what they classify as a personal item. But in general, if your bag fits underneath the seat, you should be good to go. For me personally, I use the Wandered Provoke 31 liter backpack. It has worked really well for me. I've never had any issues trying to get it underneath the seat. But to be honest, I wouldn't recommend going much bigger than this bag that I have. Next is comfort. Comfort seems like it should be a pretty obvious one, but I see it often sacrificed. A lot of times comfort gets sacrificed for looks. Your first priority should always be comfort because in the long run, it's gonna make your travels a much better experience. For my backpack specifically, the comfort is generally really nice. I like the straps, there's some padding on the back. There is one thing though that I would fix and that would be to add a waist strap. For me, I carry a lot of technology. My backpack tends to run fairly heavy and that's a good point for the rest of this video as well. Keep in mind, the products that I'm showing in this video doesn't mean they're perfect. I'm always looking for better options. These are products that I've found work well for me now but that might change in the future. So don't get too set on the products that I promote. These are just what works for me and you should find something that works for you as well. Next, durability. You're gonna wanna make sure you invest in a high quality product. As we know, travel can be really rough on a backpack. It gets shoved underneath the seat, it gets shoved through security. Making sacrifices in this category might actually end up costing you more than you think. So spending a little extra money to get a backpack that's gonna last you for years and years ultimately is gonna save compared to buying a cheap backpack that's gonna break down right away. So just keep that in mind when picking your backpack. Last criteria I look at when picking a backpack is organization. Your backpack needs to have some sort of organizational structure. Now there's no right or wrong way with this and I'll explain more later when I show you how I pack my bag, but having some sort of system and structure built within the backpack is gonna be key. I would avoid backpacks that just have one large pocket. Now, we've got the right backpack and you're probably wondering, what do I pack so that I can fit everything in one bag? And honestly, this is the most difficult part and I'm not gonna sit here and say that this process is easy. This is something that takes practice. It takes trial and error. But I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks to help you try to narrow your stuff down so that you can fit it all in one backpack. Let's start with clothes, being that that is where most people make mistakes when trying to one bag travel. Over time, I've made plenty of mistakes myself, but I've developed a template to help me so that I don't overpack when I'm trying to one bag travel. Here's my template, three shirts, one dress shirt, one pair of what I call nice shorts, a pair of pants, one layer, four pairs of socks, four pairs of underwear, and last but not least, one swimming suit. Now, with this template, I can travel for months. Let's get into specifically what I pack and the reasoning behind why I pack it. Let's start with t-shirts. In general, when I'm picking out clothes, I try to stick with neutral colors. You're also gonna find that I keep things pretty plain and simple. You're not gonna see me traveling with a lot of prints or designs on my t-shirts especially. I like to travel with a couple gray t-shirts and a little pop of color with this burnt orange one. I really try to find t-shirts that hold up well to bacteria and smell meaning I try to find materials that are gonna allow me to re-wear that t-shirt multiple times. Next, I have a dress shirt. 
I always like to have a dressier option with me, meaning if I want to look a little bit more presentable for a dinner or something like that. But with that being said, I also try not to sacrifice comfort, something that's gonna hold up well to being folded and being wrinkled. So the two options I usually bring depending on the weather is a short sleeve Lululemon in kind of this greenish olive color and a long sleeve Viore kind of dark gray slash black button up. Both of which are super stretchy and super, super comfortable. Next are pants. I usually always bring one pair of pants and I usually go one of two directions either a more formal option with a khaki color or a more casual option with a blue jean color. Both of these pants that I have here are the ABC pant from Lululemon, both of which are super stretchy and comfortable. As you can see, there's a theme here that I do not like to sacrifice comfort when I travel. I wanna make sure that even if I'm wearing a pair of khaki pants, I can still ride on a plane comfortably. Next, a layer. I usually always pack one layer and I often gravitate towards this gray Patagonia puffy jacket. The reason I like this is it's super lightweight and it packs super well in my backpack. For my shorts, I always pack one pair of what I call nice shorts. A short that is not a gym short. Something that I would feel comfortable wearing to dinner or just walking around town. I try to always keep it a neutral color so I can mix and match with all my shirts. Something that I could wear with a button up. This pair of shorts that I have are from Marine Layer. Again, neutral color, super comfortable. I also always bring two workout outfits, meaning a workout t-shirt, shorts, and compression shorts. For me, that is a non-negotiable being that in most places that I'm traveling to, I'm always working out, as well as they kind of serve as a dual purpose for just a casual pair of shorts and a casual shirt. Always bring a swimming suit. My grandpa once said, all you need is a swimming suit, and I live by that. There's been so many times in my travels when I wasn't planning to swim or go on a hot tub or a jacuzzi, and the opportunity arises, and guess what? I was prepared. I always try to bring a swimming suit, and this specific one that I bring is from Viore, and the reason I really like it is because it kind of doubles as a pair of shorts, being that there's pockets. So I can wear them as a pair of shorts, or I'm ready for any sort of water occasion. Last but not least are socks and underwear. I always bring four pairs of socks and four pairs of underwear. Nothing too fancy about these, other than I'm trying to find materials that are comfortable and don't stink too bad. I almost forgot to mention shoes. And to be honest with you, this is where people have the hardest time cutting back. I understand, shoes is a hard topic of discussion because when you're packing, you're gonna think of every potential scenario and you're gonna need a different pair of shoes for every single one of those. But I challenge you to do this. I personally usually only travel with one pair of tennis shoes. Now I know that's a bit extreme, but I would do your best to limit yourself to two pairs of shoes. Okay, a pair of shoes that's gonna allow you to be really comfortable and a pair of shoes that's gonna allow you to be a little bit more formal. So for me, for example, I usually bring a pair of tennis shoes and a pair of black Vans. Those two pairs of shoes will allow me to be comfortable in almost every setting. Now I know ladies, this can be a really hard topic of discussion, being that there are so many different options for you as far as shoes but this is gonna be a key component in getting yourself to be a one bag traveler. Next, toiletries. You're really gonna to wanna to have a minimalist mindset when packing your toiletries. Remember, when you travel, for the most part, wherever you're going, you will have access to any toiletry that you would have at home wherever you're traveling. So don't feel like you need to load up on everything before you travel. You can always pick things up when you get to your destination. For me personally, I usually pack this orange REI toiletry bag, and usually the only thing that's in it is my toothbrush, my razor, and my deodorant. Now I know that's a little bit extreme, but I would try to limit yourself to a small toiletry bag. As far as your liquids and medications, again, try to limit yourself to one small Ziploc bag. Obviously that's for TSA, so making sure that you're compliant there is gonna be key, um, not only for space, but as well as for the ease of travel. The last main category of packing for me is my tech, my technology. 
Now, this should be a good confidence builder for you because I personally travel with a lot of technology, including my main camera, my drone, my laptop, external hard drives, headphones, power adapters. In general, I travel with more technology than the average person. So this should be a good confidence builder for you if you don't travel with this much technology. Because if I can fit this all in one bag, you should definitely be able to fit all of your stuff in one bag as well. So that is essentially everything that I pack when I'm traveling with one bag. Now, it would be unfair of me to not show you how I actually fit all this stuff in one bag. So let me show you how I do it. We're gonna start with the clothes. Now, all of my clothes fit into this top compartment here. And I usually start by putting socks, underwear, and my workout gear in a packing cube. By grabbing the underwear, we got our four pair. What's nice about the packing cube for this stuff is it kind of keeps everything orderly, right? So it's not floating around in your bag. And then I also put my workout outfit in here as well. This kind of sets the base for my clothes. Next, we'll go bottoms. This will be the next layer that goes in. The key is trying to keep everything folded nicely. Boom. Last but not least, we have our t-shirts. This kind of rounds it out. I like to keep these on the top so they, so I limit wrinkles as much as possible. Good to go. All my clothes fit right in here. Next, we will do all of the tech. Computer, drone, things like that. That all goes in kind of the, what I would say is the main compartment, the big part. I usually start by framing it out with my drone, being that has this nice structure to it. From here, what I will do is I will actually grab this waterproof bag. And this is not only a good organizer for my tech, but it also has come in handy on various activities that I've done on my trips, keeping everything nice and dry. But what I put in here is things like spare batteries. So I've got my GoPro batteries. I got my spare camera batteries. Put that aside here. Now from here, I do have a spare lens. And I do have a little tip for you. If you have something like this, this is a buff you wear around your neck. I wear these a lot when I go hiking. Well, the dual purpose for me is protecting my spare lens. I just kind of put it in here, just like so. Now, that's about all that goes in the back spot, except for a couple things that I'm missing. One being my layer. I didn't put that in the top. I usually put it in this main pocket because it kind of acts as a cushion and a pillow for all my expensive stuff. And then on top of that, I will put my toiletry bag. And now we're starting to feel some of that real weight of this backpack. <laughs> but all my tech fits pretty nicely in the back there. Now, there are a couple little tech items that I have left out that actually go in a different place. I have this nice zipper up top here. And up here, I save this space for things that I use often where I don't wanna have to go digging through my main pocket, especially when you're on a plane and this bag gets shoved underneath the seat. You wanna have access to those things that you use all the time. For example, for me, a power bank, right? So I'll put that in there. I will put my headphones, external hard drive, and my iPhone charging cable. All of that will go in the top pocket there. Okay, now this is pretty much everything. Everything that I showed you is in this backpack. It does have some decent weight to it, but it fits pretty smoothly. There is one feature of this backpack I do wanna mention that I do use quite often that I really like, and that's for housing important documents like this, like a passport, okay? There's this awesome little pocket on the back side of this backpack kind of behind your back, where if you're just kind of sitting in the airport and you don't want to be carrying this on you, you can slide this right in this back pocket here, where it will basically go unnoticed. To be honest with you, you can't even see that it's there. It's completely hidden. So that's kind of a cool little feature of this backpack. Okay, I know you're probably thinking, great, I have all this information, but you're probably wondering, how do I actually execute this to be a one-bag traveler? And I'm gonna share my secret technique and practice that I use to become a one-bag traveler. 
and that is traveling underprepared. We've all been on trips and have gotten home and looked in our suitcase and been like, I didn't use that, I didn't use that, I didn't use that. The whole goal of this traveling underprepared mindset is to get rid of all of that dead weight. And sometimes it takes that extreme mental shift to help you pack less. You'll find often that when you're traveling, you're just gonna make do with what you got. Don't feel like you need an item for every situation. So I challenge you on your next trip, try to pack underprepared. Making that mindset shift will really help you to become a one bag traveler. I hope this video made you realize that traveling with one bag may not be as hard as you might think. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to our channel for more content like this. We will see you in the next video.